Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Now, last night, after the patch dropped, uh, I started playing some pure paladin and it went really well. Uh, I started winning lows, so I decided to grind a little bit and we got to number one legend with it. Um, now, we can see the stats on my climb, or on this tweet that I made. Here's the deck list, we'll, we'll get to that in a second. So, these are the stats of the various builds I tried, and overall, my face here went 47 wins, 16 losses for a 75% win rate, which was extremely good. And the reason it was so high was because I was mainly facing uh, druids and mine locks. Uh, there was a lot of druids and mine locks. Um, before the patch, obviously, there was loads of frost decays, but with the nerf, the bat, and the nerf to evolve shaman. Um, and towards the end of last season, there were a lot of success for Questros. I, I kind of expected there to be a lot of them on day one, and it was ripe for the farming, really. So, it had a really good success. Um, let's talk about the deck list. How did I come up with this deck list? Well, I didn't actually come up with it. All I did was go on to Paladin, click here, custom deck, and I just went. Complete my deck. Now, it didn't give me exactly this. Actually, this is not the deck I got. Sadly, maybe let me try that one again. If not, I'll just uh, I'll just tell you what happened. Okay, it's not it's not uh, giving me again. Well, basically, what I got before was this deck didn't have the purator in it and it said instead it had just a ran random humongous owl in pure paladin which was kind of interesting obviously not optimal so we took that out and it also didn't have a carryall roman and i always really like carryall roman in pure paladin i don't know why people cut it it's one of the best reactive plays and it's just almost always a good turn four plus got plenty of uh holy spells that are really good to discount so definitely put that one in uh, and put in the Purator as well instead of the Owl. I had two Battle Vickers. I don't like this card that much. It's a bit weak and Pro Wise has not got that much attack. Uh, so it can't really trade or push face damage that well. And like a lot of the Holy Spells just aren't very useful for an aggressive deck. So only running one of those. So this current list for the Purator is actually doesn't have like a huge amount of synergy. There is the simple Sue Chef and there's the C4 Saviors that you can draw from it, as well as both the Light Rays. Now most lists are really trying to push it, playing uh, extra cards. We can have a look real quick here on HS Replay. These are the decks playing the Purator right now, and you see they were running like Gold Wings. This guy, this one's even running Squawkers and stuff. And uh, they're really trying to force the synergy with it. Obviously you've got the slower ones with um, Lightforged Carrier, which can run Anachronos as well, but that doesn't really suit this style of Paladin, which is more of an aggressive deck. I tried a one-off um, Goldwing. As a, I thought it would be like a decent dragon, because like... Period is now a mech for one thing, and the period actually draws your mech, so like this will be activated on the turn after. But I actually just found that even post Purator, when I was playing this in the deck, I would never play this card, and I would often want to play the Seafloor Savior on the turn after I play the Purator. So the turn after that, the Goldwing's not even active. So yeah, I just cut the card because even though I draw it for kind of free, I just never played it in countless games and it was just pretty bad to draw outside of the Purea uh, generally just because it's too expensive. You don't want to be spending a lot of mana on your cards in this deck because you want to try and get the light rays cheaper playing multiple cards every turn. But I just found it was completely fine to just have the Purea as a light ray tutor pretty much. Uh, and that's what it is and it's pretty strong doing that. Okay, so that's like the, the list and how I came to it. So we played it a bunch. Um, Mulligans, 
you want like a one drop the sous chefs and the soldier are generally the best too depends on the matchups you, sous chefs probably the best one you can get just because it has a synergy with the bannerman and the light ray um discounting that but generally any one drops fine uh, if you're on the coin the Knight of Anointment comes a bit worse because it's uh, it's a little bit weak. It doesn't trade well. It gets killed by hero powers, that sort of thing. But, um, yeah. Other cards I like keeping Seafloor Saviour. Uh, especially going first is very, very good. I will keep this sometimes on the coin if we have a specific hand. Like a couple of one drops or the Bannerman. It works really well with. But just make sure it, it fits your curve. You don't really want to keep this if your planet is good, coin 3 into 3, but you don't have any 1-drops. Because you, you just don't have a turn to play this. <clears throat> um, yeah, I would not keep Order in the Court or any of the Holy Spells ever. Actually, no, I would keep this sometimes. That's a lie. I have kept this sometimes. You can keep this one if you're going first and you have, like, Sanguine Soldier. That's a pretty good combo. Or if you have Righteous Hector as your one drop, especially if you're against a, a sort of passive deck, because or, or a deck that's very likely to play like a two two on turn one. But you have to be going first. This on one, this on two, kill their two two. Have a five one divine shield in face is very very strong. But generally you don't you don't keep the holy spells. Um, don't keep order in the court either. It's a bit too slow tempo. You can keep the vindicator. Um. But hesitate. I'd hesitate from solo keeping it. Um, there's plenty of three mana plays available for this deck, but if you miss out on your one mana play, it's very, very, very devastating. So make sure you you have the curve before this, before you think about keeping it. Uh, and that goes for two drops as well. So like, if you're going first and you have this, I w I wouldn't solo keep it. Aerial Rome. Uh, you can keep this actually quite a bit. Especially if you're against another board based deck and you're on the coin, it's very good. Uh, you kind of need to swing tempo on the coin, and this is a really good card to do so. Give you discounts, can take a nice value trade, can present a threat. But it's a very, very good card, I think. Um, general gameplay advice you need to kind of get into the rhythm of when your light rays are going to be zero mana. It, it's a bit much to just count every game. I mean, you can if you want, but just recognize what you need to do to, to make them cheap. So sometimes that means if you're trying to make them cheap, you want to be playing the sous chef over other one drops, even if it gets traded off, just so you can start playing more paladin cards. For instance, like if you have a choice between these two on like turn three and you have light rays in hand, it might be better to go for the sous chef uh, to begin with, just to add out your next few turns. Um, other bit of advice, the Purator, it does draw the Light Rays, but going Coin Purator, for instance, it means the Light Rays are not going to be playable. There's, there's no way you can have played enough enough cheap cards to make these zero mana. Uh, and the same for going first, really. If you play on five, it's, it's very often the Light Rays are going to cost mana anyway. So if it's a fine play and... Um, you don't have better plays then she'll go for it but one thing i found that might be better to do a lot of the time um is to do a higher tempo play on turn five maybe involving like Zilla bloods or a bunch of minions or vindicator that sort of thing and then turn six you purator and you can play the sous chef that you draw as well and that that combined with like the high tempo turn five usually means the light rays are going to be zero mana so you do a really good turn six where you curate a double light ray plus a, a one drop all at once rather than going slow turn five and then dump everything on six. It's a bit better to do two high tempo turns in a row with the five and the six. Um, Default Saber is a card that is a bit tricky to use sometimes. Um, you can make some mistakes with this. The thing you got to recognize with this is you need to do the dredge part and play the other minion before you do your order and court into counter stuff. So 
what do I mean by that? I mean, like, if it's turn five or so, and you have a seafloor saver in hand, you're not really going to get the benefit of the dredge part if you're trying to go for the countess because you need to do your order and court plays. So, post order in the court, you don't really want to play this because it's going to draw you your one cost instead of your, the top end of your deck. And if you're going to order on court on the same turn, well, it's going to shuffle your deck, so you're not really going to get your top deck. One thing you can do if you have to do that play is uh, you see Floor Saver and hope that you hit like a Light Ray, and then you order in the court, and you can still draw it. Uh, generally speaking, you want to be uh, playing this on like turn 2 to 4, and and also so you get to play the, the minion that you get from it, and then you want to go for the order in court stuff. As for ordering the court, um, look at your hand and see whether you can actually do a turn six countess. Um, sometimes you need to like skip a higher ish tempo turn to play an order in the court early, just so you have Blood Crusader and Countess on seven. It really depends on what matchup you're against uh, and if you will have enough like tempo to not be dead doing that play basically. If you're kind of like okay-ish on board or you're against a slower deck where you don't really need to play your buff straight away, it might be better to do the order and court first just so you, you have that turn seven counters because it just, it's just very back-breaking for a lot of decks if you're not behind on board. So just watch out for that. So like if it's turn four um, and you play order, you're going to draw this, turn five, you draw the other one, and then... Turn six, you draw a countess. So, turn four, you need to have drawn one of these for it to to work on four. That like you get the turn uh, turn six countess. If it's if you don't have any of them, you need to play the order on court on turn three or or below. So sometimes if you have uh, order on two, you should play it. And the times you should play it is when you have none of these cards already in hand. And you have um, ways to make your light rays cheap. So one drops, vindicator, bannerman to maybe draw an extra card, that sort of thing. Um, you don't you generally don't want to be doing it on two if you've got a clunky slow hand which can't play multiple cards a turn because it means that the light rays are not going to be able to come down. Sometimes you you can't even play it on the turn. You count s as well. You end up just being very very slow so look out for order on two do it when you, you you can support the light rays with the hand that you already have um and that's generally my tips oh actually the blood 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 matrix liadra is quite a difficult card to play with we'll talk about her a little bit I don't like keeping her in the mulligan because she's she's kind of a specific needs a specific hand to work really. Um, she works best if she gets buffed by a uh, Bannerman or the Seafloor Savior, um, so you can start rushing out like a lot of stats. Um, but you also need like kind of a lot of mana and a lot of other minions to play with her. It's not so good good to just plop on turn two against some decks like and get removed. There are gonna be opportunities where you can do that, but it's generally not something you want to just be keeping in the mulligan to try and do so. So yeah. Don't keep in the mulligan, but look out for trying to enable her a lot. You've got to do kind of some setup plays sometimes. Um look what cards you have that have fewer attack than her. And try and save those ones in hand and try and play the other ones that you have first. Before you go for the turn with this. And sometimes you can combine her with for Kalphalos or with Seal of Blood um, to do some big swing turns. One of the best things you can do um, you order in the court with a Liadrin in hand. Sometimes just don't play the light rays until and then you go Liadrin, Seal of Blood, double light ray, and then they have Rush Divine Shield, which is an incredible swing turn and then you back that up with the countess and it's going to be very tough for a lot of decks to recover from that but yeah uh don't keep this card in the mulligan but it's uh 
it's too low tempo and there's much better things you can hear. I think that's generally my advice. Um, yeah. It's a, it's a pretty pain by numbers deck for the most part. There's some things you can do which I just uh, which I've mentioned already in this video to give you a little bit of an edge. Um, but generally, it's just like play for tempo, push face damage, try to kill your opponent. Be be aware of what AOEs and clears and powerful turns they have coming up, and play around them accordingly. It's a pretty fun deck. Um, curator drawing light rays, smash it, putting everything on the board is pretty fun. Invitations are always really fun. So. I hope you guys have a lot of fun with it. I am currently not number one with it, sadly. The guy who was one before I took it from him, I think, took it back this morning while I was asleep. So we're going to try and get this back tonight on stream. If you want to check that out, um, you can do so on my Twitch channel. Link is in the description. But I hope you guys have fun with this deck. Uh, I certainly did. And good luck on ladder.